Dominique. Well, I found out I had cancer in February. Well, it started off that I woke up the morning and I had a mass, massive migraine. And then, uh, hold on, stop real quick. Yeah. Trying to get my thoughts together. Right. Well, it started off that um, I woke up with the migraine and I started vomiting a lot and I felt real weak and my mom just thought I was playing around, but I wasn't. And so, uh, so my grandma, she was real worried. She told my mom to call the hospital. Then uh, we ended up going up to the hospital and I wasn't feeling, like I was saying, I wasn't feeling really good. So the doctors came in talking to me. I didn't feel like talking or anything. And uh, well, so a couple of days went by. Then about a week later, I had, I was gonna have surgery because uh, I had an x-ray and they seen a, a huge mass on the side of my left lung. And then, so when they, I was asleep, they gave me a silly medicine, which made me talk real funny and everything. And then I woke up in a lot of pain. And uh, then when I got out of pain, the uh, doc, surgeon, he was telling me that he found out that I had cancer. And I didn't take it as bad as my mom did. She broke down in tears and it made me feel bad. But then he started telling us the good news that it was Hodgkin's lymphoma and that was a good kind of cancer that you want, that it was easy to cure. And so uh, then I would come to the hospital for treatments and I'd stay here, eat the nastiest food. <laughs> it's really, really nasty. But you have to get over it because you have to gain your weight back because you end up losing a lot of weight from cancer. Then I would go in and out of the hospital for my chemo treatments and I would go to the clinic and uh, my treasurer, she was one of them that went through cancer, and she had breast cancer. And she was telling me how she got real emotional when she lost her hair. And I was thinking, I'm a boy, I ain't gonna get real emotional, but in fact, you actually do, because you think that how you lost all your hair, and that you would think things would get worse, but you keep on praying and praying, and have people pray for you, and you'll feel a lot better. And then, so now I'm taking my treatment right now, my last, one of my last hospital chemo treatments. And everything will be good because I had my PET scan and they said they didn't see any active cancer. So it's all. Well, for me, I know that um, with Dominique, when I first initially heard that he had cancer, you think the big C, I was like, you know, my child. Because as a parent, there's really nothing you can do other than just support him. But, um, I just prayed a lot and held his hand and just really just major, majorly, it was just my faith in God that helped to get us through in prayer, my pastor and my family and my, because we have a strong family support system, so they really helped and having Trey, it was really helped to see him and Dominique, he encouraged us the whole nine yards. You know, he was he would continually when I would feel like, you know, I was just about to give up. He would be like, you know, just say something to encourage us because he's that was him before cancer. So I think the, the best thing was just his positivity and just um, his faith in God it really helped us and my mother. So we've had a strong value and seen a lot of family members with cancer. But I know firsthand that when I saw other people with cancer, I didn't know that it was as much time invested in it, like going to meetings and having to study and do research on cancer, and which the internet was a big asset to us, um, going out there and people just sending us information on it. So I'm just thankful to God because I know, you know, he could have had another type of cancer. And I'm, I'm just thankful. All I can say is I'm thankful to God that it was Hoskins lymphoma and that just, Keep faith in God that he'll see you through it. Okay, um, for the parents, I would just like to say that there are resources out there. You can contact the social workers at the hospital or um, go out to the internet and um, look under uh, American Cancer Society. And um, also just uh, by talking to others because um, where I work at, once I started telling people about cancer, you know, my son had cancer, I found out a lot of more information that was comforting. Because Hopkins lymphoma 
was a disease I had never heard of before. And then once, you know, I started talking to others, I found out that family members had actually had this form of cancer. So just um, go to the library if you need to and do research, just pull up the cancer. It's just a lot of information out there that if, uh, just don't keep it to yourself, share it with others. Oh, um, I just know my faith in God, you know, that when you hear about cancer, it makes you look at all the positive, you know, that you truly, in the faith of God, you know, where man puts a comma, where, where man puts a period, God puts a comma. And just my faith in God really helped in knowing my pastor and his wife, they were a big support system and, um, and reading the Bible, you know, where you see where um, God took people that you would never even think of and did extraordinary things and made where well, you can make, I truly believe that you shouldn't make a mountain out of a molehill. Just rely on your faith to get you through today and tomorrow because only God knows. And I know that it was a purpose why Dominique had cancer. So I know that we can help others to um, just keep the faith. To get through cancer and everything for all the teens and everybody, well, I just had to stay really positive and I had to talk to friends and family and I had to laugh about it. Like, cause like my mom was saying, there is a reason that I got cancer and stuff. That God put it in there uh, reason cause I'm religious, not real, real religious, but I'm religious and I believe in God that he can work miracles through his power. and. My family, well, my Uncle Michael, he came in and was talking about that God, he ties up and lets things loose. Well, he lets loose the cancer and the pain and ties up the healing and the love and the positivity to make you feel good, that you just gotta keep believing that you're gonna get through it. And then um, my Uncle Thomas, he has cancer and he was telling me that, don't worry about all the scars that I have on my body and everything, that's our warrior strikes about how we got through cancer and how it's just our motivation to help others and to help them get through it. And so uh, then, um, yeah, my mom thinks that it should be, that I should go for a testimony in church to show, to tell others about it, how I got through it and how God helped me get through it. And then I also thought it was a reason that God gave me cancer because when I went to church, my pastor was talking about how when you're feeling bad and uh, like Jonas, when you don't uh, keep on to the past, you keep going forward into the future. How he had an angel and he was all about the past until he got to the point where he was fighting this invisible enemy. And so as he was fighting this in invisible in enemy, he started wrestling it instead of fighting it. He held it and said, I'm not gonna let go of you because you're my future and I'm not trying to go back to my past. I'm just trying to keep moving forward. So that's all I think about, just keep moving forward and everything will be okay. And uh, before I got cancer, I wanted to be a surgeon or a doctor, and, uh, and I wanted to be a lung or heart surgeon because one of my aunties said heart surgeons are sweet, and I wanted to be a lung surgeon because you'll work with adults and kids. And I wanted to be a doctor to work with kids because I wanted them to feel comfortable no matter what they were going through. It would help me to know like if somebody has the same kind of cancer I do, or if they have stuff they, like I went through, like I have migraines and I have asthma, I have the triad and allergies and everything. So that I could give them tips and stuff on how to stay cool with cancer and that I wouldn't lie to them. Yes, it would hurt after you had your surgery if you were gonna have surgery, but first you would get the silly medicine and you would be okay. But yeah, it would hurt after, but everything would be okay though. I like John. Like John? John and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I play the cello mm -hmm. and, um, I will, and I sing in the chorus before. Well, I just joined the Louisville West Boys Choir and I was in, only in there for about two weeks and then the next day, wow, boom, <laughs> got cancer. I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, nah, this can't be happening, come on. I was gonna go to a concert and everything, but I was okay with it because I was like, I'm just gonna get through it. It's a good thing because it's better. 
it's better late than never. And so I said, so I was okay with it. And then I decided, cause I was like, cause they told me I was, uh, I would respond rapidly to chemo. I was a good responder and I had a good heart and I stayed healthy. So I was like, yeah, yeah I get to go to Japan <laughs> <laughs> with them and everything. But I ain't worried about all that. Cause, and the good thing about cancer is that you get to go to camp quality with other kids and you get to have a lot of fun stuff. So that's, the good, that's another good thing about cancer. Don't, it's not bad to say that cancer is a good thing because it actually is. School, I was kind of disappointed that I couldn't go back to school with my friends. But uh, I had homeschooled and, they, and you really have nice teachers because they, uh, they either have family members and they teach other kids with sicknesses and problems worse than yours. And I stayed motivated with uh, school and everything because because I was more worried about others than myself, like in the hospital, because some of my nurses, the, uh, one boy I was feeling real sad about because he had a seizure while I was having my chemo, and I was always wondering where my nurse was, because cause at first it was just me, 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 wherever my nurse at. But then I was like, no, nah, it's not about me, because there's other kids with worse things. So then, um, uh, then I started thinking about others more, and then when I prayed, when I prayed with my mom, I would never pray for myself. I would pray for others that had a worse sickness. And my mom would think it was really cool and sweet because I was thinking about others instead of myself. Most worrisome is if I died and I didn't get to see my brother grow up. I told him because I just kept on praying and I would think about what my grandfather would do. What would your grandfather do? Well, my grandfather, he would stay positive and keep going. For all the teenage boys out there, it's okay to cry sometimes because as long as you don't cry too long, because that kind of takes away manliness. But it's okay to, <laughs> but it's okay to cry because uh, when you really love someone, or when sometimes it feels like it's really gonna be bad, but don't feel embarrassed about it because everything's gonna be all right. And yeah, someone thinks it's sexy. <laughs> no, <Nah>, just flat. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> they uh, because uh, the girls they like uh, sensitive people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but some of them don't like too sensitive guys, though. It was going to be okay, because the Lord didn't bring him this far, and the way he carries himself to uh, let anything happen to him now, because we know tomorrow's not promised. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, we just uh, look at it as a part of life, uh, learning and understanding. And maybe something we say or do might help somebody else. So it all has its steps. And we were on step one, and now I feel like we're hopping off step 10. Yeah. Because he has a good report. And uh, next year he'll be back in school with his friends. Hair will return. Maybe a different color. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, uh, he's at that age where hair will return. But when you get 60 and over, you're out of luck. <laughs> but. Uh, we're just thankful. We're thankful for the doctors and the hospital and they, the law, the insurance company. We're just happy for, you know, we're grateful to everybody um, that's had anything to do with uh, Dominique's recovery. And we're thankful for you, too, for uh, taking the time to put all this on tape for us. And uh, we just thank you. Yeah, everything's going to be okay, though. Just keep praying and keep working through it. Thank you. Just keep the faith. So. Amen. Now, come on down to Elam Baptist Church if you need some healing from Pastor James 
and his wife, Miss Joanne James. Thank you very much. <laughs> Keep on believing. <laughs> and yeah, some women think it's sexy. <laughs> no, it's just flat. <laughs> yeah. Sex at a cry. Some women think it's sexy.